Hey guys, I'm Saga from Techworks and this is my camera review of the iPhone 7. In the two weeks that I've had the iPhone 7, I haven't traveled with it as much as I did with the S7 Edge. But I still managed to get quite a few images and videos for this review. So let's get started. The camera module on the iPhone 7 still sticks out of the back. But instead of having a ring to protect the camera, the aluminium housing of the phone gradually raises to protect the camera. As always, let's get the specs out of the way. We still get a 12 megapixel camera at the back, but it now has a wide f1.8 aperture, which helps capture a lot more light. You also get optical image stabilization, which was only present on the plus variant iPhones before this. And you also get a quad LED flash. This sensor is capable of taking 4K videos at 30 frames per second, 1080p videos at 30, 60, and 120 frames per second, and 240 frames per second slow-mo videos at 720p resolution. The front-facing camera also got an update and now has a 7 megapixel sensor with f2.2 aperture. Getting to the camera is quick and simple. Just raise the phone and swipe to the left from anywhere on the screen. You can also use the camera app icon on the home screen to get to it. 3D touch gestures are another cool way to get to a specific feature of the camera. I am not going to get into the interface of the camera app since it is the same as it has always been. Now let's take a look at the image and video samples from this phone. All of these images are shot in auto mode. All the images are crisp, sharp and overall pleasant to look at. Colors are extremely accurate and I prefer these accurate colors as opposed to the oversaturated colors from the camera of the S7 Edge. You get a lot of detail in every image and thanks to the f1.8 aperture, you get amazing close-up shots. The portrait mode is only available on the iPhone 7 Plus which gives even better effect to these close-up shots. In artificial lighting conditions, the results are amazing and the noise levels are very minimal, if any. Thanks to the wide f1.8 aperture, even in low lighting conditions, the images turned out to be really great. As you can see, the noise levels are low and the text in the image is sharp. The new quad LED flash works as it should. This is an image without the flash. And here is the same image with the flash turned on. If you like taking images with the front-facing camera, they turn out really great in ample lighting conditions. And you have the retina flash to add more light to your images in lower lighting conditions. Coming to the video samples, the footage is very stable thanks to the optical image stabilization. As you can see from this clip, autofocus is super fast from this camera. Now here are my final thoughts. This is without a doubt the best camera on an iPhone yet. Thanks to the wide aperture and optical image stabilization, you can take some amazing low light shots which was not possible in the smaller iPhones before this. I have always felt that the cinematic stabilization on the iPhone has really been great. And now with the addition of optical image stabilization, the videos are smoother than ever. I have been using the Samsung Galaxy S7 Edge right before this, which has set the camera quality bar very high for me. The improved camera on the iPhone 7 has also been living up to my expectations and hasn't disappointed me in the last two weeks that I have been using it. If you want the best camera on your smartphone in a small form factor and have the budget for it, 